I want to be honest with you guys here. I have been around the block a time or two when it comes to the topic of making money online and more specifically creating a passive income. But what if I told you that there was actually three different ways that you can use remote closing to create a semi-passive income? And the second way we're going to talk about is you can actually become a remote closer without actually taking any calls and making money while doing it passively. So I've probably blown your mind at this point. So make sure to sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. Welcome to the Remote Closing Academy. So you might have guessed the reason I'm making this video is because we get a ton of questions of people asking like, is remote closing passive? And after weeks, if not months of saying like, no, it's not passive, like you have to take calls, I started to think about it. And then I looked up the definition and it says passive income is a type of unearned income that is acquired automatically with minimal labor to earn or maintain. And I thought about that. And if that's what passive income is, there's multiple ways that you can make money as a remote closer with minimum labor or actually no labor at all. And if we jump over to my trusty iPad here, we're going to go ahead and break down these three different ways that you can make money semi-passively as a remote closer. So the first way that this is going to happen is through something called a split pay commission. So let's just say, take into consideration a $7,500 offer. So usually if you sell an offer, that's 75, that's a weird five, but 7,500 bucks, you're going to make 10% of that, which gives you about $750 per sale, which is pretty good, right? But not every single person is going to just drop $7,500 cash, whether it's a financial situation, whether they don't trust the program just yet, maybe they wanna get a little bit of taste before they go and drop the entire money into it. They're gonna do something that's a split pay so they can do it in multiple payments. So let's say it's a two pay or a three pay. So in this consideration, we're gonna say they do a three pay, right? So three pay means that they're gonna split up the 7,500 bucks through two different or two to three months. So month two, and month three. What happens here is if we take the three pay, right, what's gonna happen, this breaks down. So the 750 is gonna divide that by three, and that's gonna give you a commission of $250 per sale, right? So you're gonna make 250 as opposed to the 750. Now don't get discouraged. This isn't like abnormal. This happens pretty frequently within the remote closing space, especially when you're first starting, right? There's a lot of closers out there that are elite, super high level that can, you know, they're going to get someone to move forward at the 7,500 because they're good at helping other people. They're good at helping them understand that this is the thing that's gonna help them reach their end goal. But again, when you're first starting out, sometimes you gotta get some split pays. Now, the cool part about this and what makes it passive is this 250, right? You're gonna get another 250 at month two and you're getting another 250, uh, 250 if I can do my dang fives today, at month three. Now, where it starts to compound is again, this 250 and this 250, you don't really have to do anything to make those that money in month two, month three. So that's where the passive part comes in. But imagine, let's say you get, you get 10 three pays, right? And again, sometimes you'll do two pays. Rarely companies will do like a four pay because it just becomes too much. But you know, there's two pays and three pays. But if we just use this three pay example, Let's say you get that times 10, right? You get 10 three pays. Now you times this number here times 10. And now in month two, you're going to make 2,500 bucks pretty much without having to do anything, right? As long as the offer is good, as long as the, you know, there's coaches that are taking care of them, as long as they have a track record and as long as they're seeing success, you are going to see this money. And then that's also going to move over to month number Three. Now here's where the compound effect happens, right? Let's say this 2,500, let's say in month two, you also get 10 more three pays. Now you're gonna get another 2,500 bucks right over here. So that brings your passive quote unquote income to 5,000 a month, not to mention what you're already making on the other sales through, let's say you get full pay. So you're getting 750, 750, whatever, but you have this 5,000 in month three after that compound effect happens that you're going to be able to take home. Now, I know this might be kind of confusing with all these numbers on screen, but just understand that you are able to create a semi-passive income, not really having to do much on the back end as long as the offer is good and that people are happy and people are staying and paying the actual two and three pays. So jumping into the second way you can make passive income as a remote closer is becoming a sales manager. So here is what I talked about a little bit earlier of not having to actually take sales calls. This is what I'm talking about. So let me just paint the picture for you guys here in just a second. So let's just say you have an offer, right? A specific uh, offer up here that you're selling for. What happens is there starts to become a time where there's one, two, three, four, five different closers on this team. And what starts to happen is the CEO is up here, right? And they're managing, they're doing all the different things that it takes to run a business. So it gets to a point where they can't physically manage, manage every single person on the team. So what happens, if you just take all these lines out of the way, 
is one of these people usually, right? One of these people, or they bring someone outside of the company, becomes a sales manager. And this person then becomes the point of contact for all of the sales reps under them. This also happens, I mean, this is one example of like, there could be a sales manager overall that manages the setters and closers. In some businesses, both teams are relatively large to where they have a closer manager and a setter manager, and sometimes multiple managers within each of those. So the way that you can look at it is there's two ways that it's going to break down. You as a sales manager or a setter manager is going to manage each of those people. And what that day-to-day looks like is you're listening to calls, right? That they're doing, you're doing meetings, you're checking projections, you're making sure that everyone has what they need to do, or they know what they need to do and they have what they need in order to see success. Now there's really two main ways that you can come in and uh, make money as a sales manager. So there, there's, there's so many different variables when it comes to this, but I'm just giving you guys some examples from what I've seen in the multiple companies that we've worked with. So you have two different ways that you'll usually, uh, you know, be, be broken down. You have a percentage, right? Hitting percentage of projections and you have different tiers that you can get paid on. More often than not, there's going to be a base pay when it comes to, you know, being a manager. So it could range anywhere from, you know, $4,000, you know, I've seen seven to $10,000 in terms of a base pay. Because remember, they're paying this person to manage all their sales reps that are doing a hundred you know, 500, a million dollars a month in terms of sales. So it makes sense to them to pay them that kind of money for the teams that they're managing to hit those higher numbers. So let's just say, I don't want to take all this away because it's getting kind of confusing. So let's just go ahead and split the difference and say we have a base pay of 6,000. So now on the percentage side, I mean, this one's, I mean, relatively simple is they're going to make a percentage off of each of what the units that are, are done. So again, let's just take into consideration, let's say it's a $10,000 offer and let's say they're making 2% off of each of those sales, they're gonna, that's gonna equal out to about $200 they're gonna make per sale. Now you might be looking at that 200 and you're saying, well, Aaron, like only 200 bucks per sale, like that doesn't make sense. Well, yes, it's less than you would as a setter, right? Because setters make 3%, but remember you're managing this team. So let's say each of these guys or gals close 10 deals, right? That equals 50 deals out of those, and that's 50, deals times 200 bucks. And that's you're making $6,000 as your base plus this here, which is 10. So you're making $16,000. That's yep. 16,000. There you go. And you haven't taken a single sales call. You've reviewed sales calls. You've helped these people get a lot better, but you haven't taken a sales call. So you can look at that again. It's not passive, but in a way it is, right? Going back to the definition, it is minimal labor to actually go in and maintain. Now, I'll be 100% honest, there isn't minimal labor that goes into it, but the reason I'm labeling as passive is because you don't have to physically take sales calls, so it's passive in the form of remote closing, if that makes sense. Hopefully this makes sense. <laughs> now, let's just pump the brakes here for a second because you might be saying, well, Aaron, this right here looks very similar to, I don't know, like a pyramid scheme, but I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna break it down and show you why it's very different. So what I just talked about is you have one person up top, that's the sales manager, and you have a bunch of people down here that they're managing, right? It ends here, right? These people are not recruiting more people to then you know continue this triangle, right? It's just, this person is managing these people. It's no different from any job that you have, right? You have the business owner or the manager or the business owner, and then you have the manager and then you have supervisors and then you have it. There is, I mean, if you think about it that way, other businesses are more of a pyramid scheme than this, <laughs> but all jokes aside, it, it stops. Like there is no recruiting down here, as opposed to, again, an MLM, you have a person here, they then recruit these people and these people are incentivized to recruit more people. And these people are like, it just continues down the line. So I always got to call that out because everyone, for whatever reason, likes to put in the comments that this is a pyramid scheme. So let's get back to the tiers here is generally what's going to happen is again it's going to be either this one or this one and there's going to be different tiers so there's going to be a lot of times there's going to be like a 90 percent tier there's going to be a 100 percent tier and there's going to be a 110 percent tier and each of these is going to be correlated with a bonus so for example 90 percent would be uh 90, hitting 90 percent of the projections would be an extra let's call it um usually what i've seen is 2500 and then 2500 and then 2,500 in the tier list. And then what they're gonna do those percentages off of is a projection. So let's just say the sales manager is gonna project, keeping the number simple, they're gonna say, we're gonna hit 100 units this month. So what happens here is if they're projecting 100, if they hit 90 units, right? Because 90% of the projection is this number here, they're gonna make an extra 2,500. And then if they hit 
100 units, they're going to hit 100% of the projection, which is another 2,500. And then if they hit 110 units, they're going to get their third tier of their bonus. So when you do all that math here, if you have 6,000 plus 2,500, what's the math there? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 5. All right, 13, 5 here. So again, you can look at that and say, okay, well, that's less over here than over here. But also when you're looking at this side of it, you have to take into consideration that this number, this 2% might be lower. And these numbers in terms of the amount that they hit might be lower as well. So there is a lot of give and take. And this 2,500 number could also be higher. Um, so there's, a lot, again, a lot of variables that go into play, but this is just to give you a general idea. Now, the last part we're going to break down here is a four back end commissions. And I put not as likely because and I'll explain that here just in a second after I break down exactly what it means. But in some programs, what's going to happen is they have a front end product and they have a back end product. The front end product. So let's just say, for example, it's we'll use the weight loss example again. So let's just say the front end is to help them create a meal plan is to help them lose weight, is to help them do whatever. And let's say it's a three-month program. And let's say the three-month program is, again, let's just keep it simple. Let's say it's $4,000. As a closer, you're going to make 10% of that, which gives you $400 per sale. And that, you know, sometimes that's where it ends. But sometimes there's a thing called a back-end sale, which this offer, right, the the um, the health loss, the health loss, the weight loss offer will have a back-end offer, which is let's say it's a little bit higher. Sometimes it's like a continuation. So they'll charge a certain amount per month. But let's just say this back end offer is uh, 10,000 for the year. That's usually how it happens. And the way that it's sold, because you might be saying like, why would they pay like 4,000 and then pay 10,000 again? Well, how most offers are, if you go in and let's say you lose and you hit your goal, you hit, you lose 30 pounds, right? What is going to happen is you need continued accountability. You need people to still help you kind of get to that point. Is everyone going to upgrade? Not really. Is some people going to upgrade? For sure, because they want to see continued success. And if you look at it as like a business growth standpoint, some offers, you know, that we've sold on before is there'll be, let's say a $15,000 upfront. If the business goes through and they make that money back, or let's say they make $300,000 from what they learned in that program, you better believe they're going to upgrade into their backend offer, which in this example I'm using, it is a $60,000 offer. So going back and showing you here is let's say in this, this uh, three month weight loss example, let's say their backend is 10,000. So what's going to happen is because you were the salesperson and why I put not as likely, because there's a lot of companies that don't do this, right? The backend is going to have like a backend closer or a finisher is what they're called. And, but again, in this passive example is because you originated the sale, there's a potential that you make a percentage on this. So let's say it's less, let, let's say it's only 5%, right? Let's say it's only a 5% commission for you being the originating salesperson. Well, you're still going to make 500 bucks per sale and you basically haven't done anything, right? You haven't other than making that initial sale. Yeah, you might do some follow-ups. Yeah, you might check in a couple times, see how they're doing. But again, if we're taking this passive of minimal to no effort, you don't have to do effort to get them to sell on the side of it, especially if they're looking into jumping in the back end. If they're, if they're happy, they've seen results. A lot of times the back end sales are way easier than the front end because they've already validated success. They've already seen the results that you promised them and they just want to get more of what they've already gotten. Now, at this point, if you're trying to grab me through the screen, you're saying, Aaron, sign me up yesterday to get started in remote closing. Well, if you check the video on screen, it's gonna bring you to a video. We talk about four steps to hit your first $15,000 a month as a remote closer and get you closer to this remote closing passive income journey. Check it out. We'll see you on the other side.